Full assurance. Well, this word in the Greek actually means to be fully assured or fully convinced. You know, there's one thing you never want in your life, especially at this time, and that's doubts. And our Father amplified this very word, full assurance, in the Greek manuscripts, whereby you could find that comfort, knowing he meant exactly what he said, and as it was written, so it is, as long as you do not allow the traditions of man to infiltrate, to dilute, or to make void the Word of God. So open your Bibles, if you would, to the first, the first book of Corinthians. We're going to pick it up in chapter 2, where kind of the foundation for full assurance rest in Paul teaching. Chapter 2, verse 1, 1 Corinthians, with that word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. I didn't certainly use the wisdom of man. And I didn't come with a bunch of big words. I spoke in your language, your colloquial uh, speech, whereby you could understand clearly. Paul always taught on three levels, and he always kept these things in mind. Clarity, the simplicity in which Christ himself taught. Verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's knowing a lot when you break that down. To know Jesus Christ crucified, you must have the four W's. Who, what, when, where. Who crucified him? Why they crucified him? When they crucified him? And what was it to accomplish? When you know those things, then you know the mystery of the working of Almighty God. His plan of salvation that began even before the foundations of this earth age. That's the mystery. And within that comes full assurance. Verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. I was just a common man. There wasn't anything supernatural about me. I'm just like you were. Okay. Prone to the weaknesses of the flesh and everything else. Verse 4. Here we go. This is why we came here. And my speech... And my preaching was not with enticing words of men's, man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power. When you have the Spirit and the power, those are not idle words. That Spirit, Numa, is the Holy Spirit. That is the very presence of God Himself. That is the very presence of Christ Himself. And that word power is dunamis. It's where our word dynamite comes from. And for the Christian, that power is there when you ask it in his name. But full assurance, no doubt, full of faith, knowing he is able. And there you have the foundation of complete trust in him, knowing that power, not, not just words, not just promises, not just answering of prayer, but with answering promises and prayer with power. And power from Him. It's not you that do it. This is why Christ could give us power over all of our enemies, as it is written in Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 19. All of our enemies. We have power, dunamis, over them. Why? Because he gives it to us. And he sees that that power is exercised. You can have full assurance to that. That's why there's such power in prayer. When you connect that and tie it to full assurance. That's complete faith. Complete knowledge. Knowing, hey, we're not playing church. This is real. Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. Verse 5, 
that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The foolish wisdom of men will get you nowhere but in trouble. Empty promises, false teachings, enticing words, it'll be okay. You don't have to understand God's word. You're going to fly away. That's man's tradition. It's sure not in God's word. That's not a promise of God. He gives you rather quite the contrary, the, the gospel armor and power to go with it. To do what? To flit away? No. To stand against the fiery darts of Satan. He cannot harm you. <clears throat> Why? Because you have full assurance from him that he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. And, you know, there, there are some of us that have lived at times we know that to be a true statement, when it looked like it was over. And he's always there. And he protect, protects his own and brings them through. Otherwise, we have many that, that um, sacrifice, but they know and understand. And we thank our Father that with full assurance, you have his blessings and his attention, his guidance. Verse 6, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That, translate that mature. That, there's nobody perfect, okay? It means a mature Christian, one that's not still, he's at least potty trained, okay? Got a little bit of knowledge going for him. Yet not the wisdom of this world, this world age, that's eon, nor of the princes of the world that come to naught. That is to say, the Kenites, quite frankly, knowing who they are, knowing how they operate. And they, they, who is the prince of this hour, the darkness, the hour of darkness? Satan, of course, and his offspring. You know that. That gives you a great advantage. Because you don't think in ways that people would in this earth age, knowing not that there was one before or one coming after. Most Christians believe they're going to go way off from this planet. Though it's written plainly, this is where heaven is. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely astounding that educated people would believe they're going off to some other planet, some other place, when heaven's going to be right here on earth, and it's well written and well established. That's traditions of man that leads people into false uh, uh, thoughts on what's safe and what isn't. There's only one safety, and that's with your father. He's on the throne. He's going to stay there. You want to please him. You don't want to please men. If you're a man pleaser, then you're going to offend some people. Tough stuff, okay? Tough if you offend them. You don't need them. You don't need somebody that offends easy uh, with man, uh, listening to man's traditions. You want men and women and children that stand on the Word of God, fully assured, knowing Father is on the throne. And do you know something? True love is that if you speak God's Word and that offends someone, it will bring them more to you that love him and love you. Okay. You got that? In other words, they'll stick with you. You're talking about God's children, just as you are. They'll stick with you. You can count on them. When the going gets rough, hey, they'll be there. Why? They're can-do people. Well, why is that? They're fully assured. That means they're fully competent and know and understand what's coming down the pike and they're ready for it, gospel armor on in place, bring it on. They can cut it, fully assured. And uh, so it is. But we speak, verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Before this earth age, God ordained the election. Well, what, what do you mean? That's quite simple. No big deal. 
There were, there were people that didn't get sucked in by Satan in the first earth age. Okay? And they earned the right to be chosen as one of God's elect. Why? Because they can cut it. They were fully assured then, and the mystery of the thing, though in its simplicity, is you can still count on them. Hey, they can cut it. They're fully assured. They're champions of the people when it comes to standing for God. And God knows it. Why? They've been tested. He didn't choose them as elect because they're the prettiest. I mean, look at you. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that, really. It just slipped in there, okay? Anyway, anyway, God does love you because of your action, what you accomplished. And you are beautiful in his sight. Verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. They just don't get it. Okay, They can't get it. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Why, it brought about their destruction. Well, can you document that? I sure can. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Christ came to this earth to die on the cross to destroy Satan, the prince of darkness, which is to say death. That's why he came here. And it was long set. There's no mystery to it. Again, the simplicity in which Christ teaches with full assurance. That's the way it is. Amen. And amen means that's that. No, no need, nothing you can do about it. That's the way it is. And that's the way it's going to stay. Okay. Uh, verse 9, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, not, uh, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Oh, how he does. Those that love him. Those that have full assurance. They're wired in. They're hooked up with the very Holy Spirit that gives us that power to overcome. Verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Well, 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 what Spirit? Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. And so it is that our Father gives us the ability to find full assurance. And with that full assurance comes fully convinced that what God teaches and what God says is correct. Go to with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's pick it up in verse 3 of First Thessalonians. Okay. Again, Paul the writer, father the author. Verse 3 reads, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. There again is that hope and the labor of love in the sight of God and our Father for Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. That election means chosen of God. Having earned it, as we stated before, even from the first eon of time. And, you know, it is amazing that you have so many people, highly educated, that believe you can't be a Christian and understand science all at the same time. Because some Bible thumper will say, this Bible says this earth is only 6,000 years old, and so be it. What ignorance. For this Bible says this earth is millions of years old. And that's why that there's no, that's why science in the sense of time and eons of time is accurate. Okay. But more accurate is God's Word. And I thank our Father for that. That's how the elect came to be. Verse 5, why we came here. For our gospel came not unto you in word only. It wasn't just a bunch of words. 
some preacher just saying a bunch of words, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, that's full assurance, full confidence, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. In other words, they went through much trouble to bring that truth, that full assurance. But it's there, and that that always comes with the Holy Spirit and the power He brings. You know, that's why we have healings, and that's why at God's pace, that's why we have miracles at God's place, pace, and that's why you can count on Him. That's why in your lifetime, many times when you thought it was all over, it just things worked out real good and it was just all right. You know, and he knows. Okay. And it is not just words, but it is his power. And you can rest fully assured, full of confidence, full of faith. And our Father says it, and he means what he says, and he acts upon what he says. And if you are a believer, you can count on that. But, but, Pastor, you don't understand. I have trouble. Well, handle it. You're a child of God. I mean, get tougher and meaner with it than a junkyard dog. Okay? Take care of business. Don't be a wimp. You know, quite frankly, that's why God chose the election in the first place. They weren't a bunch of wimps. They can cut it. They're can-do type people. Any trouble we've got today, you can handle, just about. But we've got trouble coming up, you're going to need him with, okay? That's why you want to remember full assurance. And you want to hang on to that, okay? Verse 6, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. It's, It's always a joy. Even to work you through those hardships, to when you when you almost fall down to get back up and hit it, I mean go, you know, then you find that joy that he just reaches down and picks you up as he would that lost lamb and takes it back to the fold. He takes care of business. You can be fully assured. So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. You you were examples. Do you realize that even today as God's elect, you are an example? You ever look at yourself that way? Don't don't get on some ego trip on me, but it is true. You set an example forth as one of God's elect. You're confident. You know know if, if we lose a loved one, which it breaks our hearts, but we know where they are. And you, likewise, are an example. You can help someone that is in ignorance and comfort them and assist them with truth. Why? Because you're full of confidence, fully assured. So, uh, verse 8, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. In other words, Christianity grows. A little leaven leaveneth the whole loaf. Works just the other way with sin. But it will also work that way with truth. Once you grab the truth and once you see that truth, you're not going to turn loose of it. Well, why? Because you're fully persuaded. It's the most valuable thing you have. You're not going to give it up for anything, especially not traditions of man. Verse 9, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. You changed from a bunch of heathen to Christians with the power and the might of Almighty God. They knew, they tasted, and they kept and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. 
don't don't read over that, beloved. That's part of the assurance. He delivers you from what? From from um, the wrath to come. What, what, what wrath is that? Well, both of Satan and God's wrath. God's not mad at you. So you don't have to worry about it. Christ is our shield. Who walked with the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Christ did. And so he walks with you. You can be fully assured of that. You can be fully convinced. Because you can cut it. You're a can-do type person. And God will keep that wrath from you. Talk about finding assurance and protection. And you know something? You should. You know why? You're a child of God. And He loves you. And you know something? If He couldn't take care of His own, He wouldn't be able to take care of anybody. But God forbid He loves His children. Every example that was set forth with Messiah, loving Messiah, and I mentioned earlier the 100 sheep, one of them goes astray. Who does he take care of? The one that went astray. That's love, friend. That's caring. That's why you can have full assurance. Turn, turn back one book here to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And Colossians chapter 2, about the same subject, full assurance. Verse 1, For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Uh, and, uh, and so it was. Paul loved the people. He loved to take the truth to him. He must have because he was beaten, shipwrecked, and many hardships. Do you think that he sweated that? No. Why? He knew God was with him. He had full assurance. Verse 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and into all riches of the full assurance. How much? Full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And that, again, that mystery is the simplicity of God's election. Simply that He gets it done. He has a plan. Nothing can alter that plan. Nothing can deter that plan. It's going down exactly as it's written, and that's why you can take much confidence. That's why you can be fully assured. That's the way it's going to happen. Always has, it always will, and you can rest assured of it. Verse 3, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? In whom? In Him, in our Father. Your Father. Not in somebody else, not in some other family, but in your heavenly Father, you have all these things, all that mystery. That's why he wrote you this letter, so that you could absorb it, so that you could pick up on that mystery, so that you could gain that knowledge and that wisdom, not wisdom of the world, which you should be street smart, but the wisdom that gives you eternal life, wisdom that makes you an overcomer. Wisdom that gives you full assurance, which gives you full conviction, and certainly no doubt. Verse 4. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. This is something you want to be careful of. Well, how do I know the difference? Check him out in the, word, the letter God sent to you. It's real simple. If he's giving you a bunch of malarkey that doesn't align with God's word, throw him out. Okay. Don't out of your mind. Don't listen to him. It's a bunch of malarkey. And where where would that get you? Nowhere. God, you know something. You can upset our Father pretty easy if you 
are gaining pretty good in the Word of God, and all of a sudden you go after some nutcase. Okay? Un- undocumented in God's Word as many times as He warns you. So you want to be real careful. You want to check this man, any man, any person out in the Word of God, whether what they say is true or untrue or just a bunch of malarkey. There's a lot of it in this world, my friend, and you know you've waded through it. Okay, Verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Order is a wonderful thing. That's discipline. Okay, That's, that's our discipline today. Discipline is one of the richest things you can have in your life. It sets you apart from other people. You know, when you practice discipline, when when you do, you hook your own discipline up with full assurance and you're getting somewhere, okay? You can cut it. Verse 6, And you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. In your daily life, again, Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. Okay. Keep that power with you. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Faith is a powerful thing. Faith in the Father gives you assurance that he is your Father and that he loves you. And so he will. Verse 8, beware, you be careful, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You know, a lot of people say, well, how in the world could people be, how could a modern day church let traditions interfere with their worshiping God? I use this all the time, maybe too much. But it oversimplifies the whole situation. The high, inasmuch as Christ became, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, became our Passover. He is our Passover. This is the highest holy day of Christianity. And do you know what a lot of modern churches do? They go out and roll Ishtar eggs. That's heathenistic, beloved. Anyway, well, it doesn't do any harm. Well, not, no, I like boiled eggs. Not bad, but I'm not going to worship some heathenistic festival. Not on my high holy day of all the Lord Jesus Christ. Or maybe, maybe they would be wise enough that they would have intelligence about, intelligence about them and would never, never, never buy into quick like a bunny with an Easter bunny. I mean, I mean, what kind of religion is that? That's traditions, my friend. And that shows you how that you can be ripped off from the highest holy day of full assurance that Christ became our Passover for you. To go into traditions of men and rudiments of the world. And, well, do, do you hate? No, I feel sorry for them, okay? Hey, hey, I've hidden Easter eggs, okay? Before I came to knowledge, and I don't know if I hid them, I found them, okay? Sure found my part of them, too, okay? But once you graduate and come to knowledge, that makes a difference. That's when you can be fully assured. Don't ever use that as a hammer on somebody. They don't know. You're, earlier we found that thing, to he that is perfect. And I said that really means mature. That means you're mature enough that, that by the grace of God, there goes you. So you be kind and you be gentle to them in, in their um, deception. For they have bitten into vain philosophy that makes void the actual Passover by the words of man, not the word of God. Verse 9. For in him, that's to say in Christ, 
dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Why? Emmanuel, God with us. Okay? That's why you have that power right there. That's why you can count on him. That's why you can pray to him. And that's why you pray to our Heavenly Father, but you always pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That gives documentation or credentials that you're a Christian, a believer, that you have that assurance. Verse 10, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. You don't need anything else. He is it. The principality, that means power even in high places, angelic powers even if you would. He's over all, controls all. And I don't know if anybody ever told you, he's your father. He created your very being. Why? He wanted someone like you. He wanted someone he could count on, someone he could love. Someone that would have full assurance and accept it that he is Father, and within him is all in all. Verse 11, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Well, well what is the circumcision of Christ? Well, it's not made with hands, it's the heart. And it happens to both men and women when he touches you. And that brings about that circumcision of love toward him, which is to say full assurance in knowing he is able and he is there. <clears throat> Verse 12, buried with him in baptism. That's what when you are publicly baptized, that's what it signifies, going into that grave meaning you're a believer, wherein also ye are risen from, with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. God's operation, you're a part of it. Think about that. And that brings you, that, that documents that you are a follower, a follower indeed. 13, and you, being dead... In your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened, being made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Did you get that? Don't ever, you know, part of the traditions of man is they don't want to let you go. How many did it say all trespasses? That's, say it even southern, like all. It's, it's all of them. Okay, not part of them, but but brother, you don't understand. There's the matter of divorce. It said all. Okay, no no halfways, no this, no that. It said all. Verse fourteen, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. That that means. Um, uh, dogma, okay? It's not the law now. I don't think this is the law. But ordinances, there's a difference. That was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. In other words, Christ fulfilled those things. He changed nothing, but he fulfilled them. And he brought that love and that power of forgiveness for that people that serve can, can have that fresh start in that book of life, which is your record in heaven. That's where your church letter is kept, is in heaven, by him. And when you repent, all the bad stuff is erased. The good stays. The good deeds. Um, verse 15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them, in it, in himself, he defeated death, which is to say the devil. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. You don't go by moons anyway, that's lunar. And Satan is, all prophecies written of Satan are in the moon, moon. Okay. You're a child of light, solar. And we go by those souls, in other words, days. 
The two witnesses had how many moons? None. The two witnesses had 1,260 deaths. Light. Solar. Okay. So don't, don't let somebody... Well, you don't understand, brother. That seventh day is holy. Christ is holy. And you know something? You had better have him every day. You better have him seven days a week. You better keep him over your head. Because troubled times are coming. And just one day of the week won't cut it, won't get you through, friend. So, if Hebrews chapter 4 makes it very clear that Christ became our Sabbath. Do you know what Sabbath means? It means rest. There is no other rest. You can't have peace of mind without having Christ in this world today. There is no rest. But in Him, you can find that solace, that peace. Why? Because that power and full assurance is with you uh, 24-7. Okay. You can count on it. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And the law was only a shadow of things to come, and the law very much still exists, but many of the ordinances were nailed to that cross. You need to know the difference in law, statutes, and ordinances. 18, let no man beguile you. You notice how often we're warned about that, because man will do it to you. Okay? Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. On an ego trip, some super preacher, you know, telling you to do this and do that and worship this angel or that angel. and You, you want to worship Almighty God and pray in Christ's name. There you have the full Godhead. And you can rest fully assured. But men on ego trips can really, I mean, they can sock it to you. Okay. Um, I think men don't understand beguiled of the words of men like women do. Women have heard it all. Okay. They have been beguiled by this and beguiled by that. Well, they tried. Okay. But they'll do it to you. Okay. They're out there. And, and you know how, just, you can just turn them off, poop, just like that, and no problem. Stick with our Father and His Word. Uh, and that'll keep you out of trouble. 19. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, ha- uh, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. You know, we are all one body. We don't want any weak links, okay? This is why, as I said earlier, some might be offended if I said, if somebody doesn't want to hear the truth and everything, don't worry about keeping them. Let them go. You don't want any weak links. Okay. You want people that can knit together in truth and love that truth and enjoy that truth in the many-membered body, knowing some man is not the head, but Christ is. Christ is that head. From that comes full assurance. Um, verse 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, if they don't mean anything to you, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Why would you be? 21, touch not, taste not, handle not. Don't do this and don't do that. Okay. 22, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Uh, that does not disannul the food laws, beloved, if you want to be healthy. But don't let somebody, you'll have people, don't worry, they'll get around to telling you you shouldn't even burn gas. Okay. And they'll make a point of it by making it so high, it's pretty difficult to burn it, okay? But, and, and tell you it's not healthy for you. That's another way of conquering the free nation. They'll try any way they can, the rudiments of man. 23, 
which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship. You know what will worship is? That's self-imposed. That's man worship. And humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor, not in any value, that is to say, to the satisfying of the flesh. You know, you want to stick to God's Word. And you know something? Your flesh will be healthy, basically. Of course, we live in a polluted world, the best you can. Being fully assured that Christ chose you a long time ago. He can count on you, and he knows it. I, 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 there's there, there's one, one more verse I want to go to, Hebrews chapter 10. Just two verses there, and we're through. My notes fell down on the floor, so I got to go by memory. I don't know where we'll end up, but probably not too far wrong. <clears throat> Let's pick it up with chapter 10, verse 20. This is that old chapter where Christ said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book for you. By a new and a living way which he hath consecrated, this is chapter 10, the book of Hebrews, consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. He did it for us. 21. And having an high priest over the house of God, in other words, he rent that veil from top to bottom where you can go in any time. He is the high priest. He's with you. He's there for you. You don't need some man or some person to go in before you or to speak for you. 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance. How much full assurance of faith? having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water, and Christ is that water. He's the living water. One more verse, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You can count on it. That's why you can be fully assured. That's why you can be fully convinced, not just by words, but by actions. That's where power, dunamis, comes in. When you talk to him, and he hears you, and he touches your heart, that is part of that circumcision, that he loves you. You know, he created you for his pleasure. Documented in the last verse of chapter 4 of the great book of Revelation. And when you give him pleasure, it makes his day. He's got feelings, and he has a big heart of love and understanding. But when he watches over you, you could have no better protection. That, and in that, you can be fully assured. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the privilege of serving you. Father, be with us this day. We ask it in Yeshua's precious name. Amen, amen. Offer by right.